One important effect of these characteristics of digitalization is the reduction of transaction costs. So what do we, we mean by that? You can really think of it as, as transaction costs. So for example, if you go to the bank and you want to make a transaction, for example, you want to send money to somebody and you go into the branch and you talk with a bank clerk sitting there behind the window, it costs the bank about a dollar to execute this transaction. Well, because there are a lot of transaction costs involved. They have to rent a space where to sit this person. They need a security mechanism. Uh, they need to pay this person's salary and so forth. They need to train this person. So on average, it costs the bank about a dollar for every transaction you make. Yeah in the branch. Now, if you make it through the telephone, it only costs them 50 cents. And if you make it through the internet, it only costs them one cent to make this transaction. That's why banks have an interest that you use online banking. Why are the transaction costs so reduced? Well, there are many, several characteristics involved. Time is time, for example. You can negate sequence. It's not necessary to have a strict hour from eight in the morning and for two in the afternoon and you have to pay somebody to be there. The death of distance, it doesn't really matter where you are. The bank doesn't need to have so many different locations to be close to you. Economies of scale, the bank only has to develop the online banking software once. And once it developed it, it can give it to all its different branches. It doesn't have to retrain the algorithm that now substitutes the banking clerk and algorithmification as well. So instead of having a person executing this rule, this procedure, this recipe, algorithms do it for us. So there are several characteristics involved that lead to this transaction cost reduction with the result that we want to digitalize now all kinds of previously offline services, financial services, money itself is basically a service that's being digitalized it can be 100% digitalized. You have three more, I have three less. So basically, that's all that money is. We can digitalize it. Um, newspaper, movies, airline tickets, lectures, of course, as you see here right now, there's a transaction cost reduction. The university doesn't need to maintain also buildings in order to do that. And it's better for you. You can negate sequence. You have timeless time. You could watch it at three o'clock in the morning. Um, so all these transaction costs get reduced through digitalization. These here are some statistics that show you the digitalization of the music industry. Not too many years ago, the music industry was still maintaining a big physical apparatus to distribute its music. So there were stores, there were physical music carriers, CDs, music, music tapes, uh, vinyl records. We had employed people in these stores. And this is slowly but surely, well, actually, very quickly, actually, <laughs> has been digitalized uh, to a fact where algorithms now substitute the people who give you recommendation on what kind of music to listen to. And you basically, even you buy the music online, you distribute, you distribute it through streaming services. And that reduced a lot the transaction costs, all kind of transaction costs involved in the distribution of music, leading to the fact that the music industry has been very quickly, is very quickly being digitalized. The reduction of transaction costs in general has far reaching consequences for the very structure of our economy. So, for example, here we have our digital economy where companies trans make transactions from the supplier until the consumer, and this is being digitalized now, this information flow. And a lot of transaction costs, formally transaction costs, for example, I had to search for a client, I had to search for a provider, I had to negotiate prices. All of this is being digitalized, and that has far-reaching effects on how big and how small is the optimal size of a company. Where does that idea come from? It comes from something that's really called transaction cost theories, actually one of the few theories that received two Nobel Prizes, so for, with Roland Coase in, in the 90s and with Williamson in, in 2009. And both of them, Coase and Williamson, worked on this transaction cost theory. And basically to say it in one sentence, what this theory says is that the optimal size of a firm depends on if internal transaction costs are smaller or larger than external transaction costs. 
What does that mean? It means that a company has internal and external transaction costs. So an external transaction cost might be that the company negotiates with a supplier, for example, about a price, or it supervises a supplier. For example, imagine your company, you need some input from some other supplier. You have to make sure that this is very good quality, that they are not cheating because you at the end have to sell it to your customers. So you have to supervise them, you have to give orders, you have to negotiate. Now, if this coordination cost is extremely high and you could actually do a cheaper in-house, what you do is you basically in-source. That means you do the same work cheaper inside your company and as a result, your company grows. On the other hand, if your company is kind of like too big and you do too many things and the transaction costs are too high, for example, you have your own accountants in the companies and you have your own lawyers in the companies and actually it's not very efficient. The transaction costs of maintaining them is, is too high. What you do is you outsource, for example, to an accountant company or to a lawyer company. And as a result, your company gets smaller. So if internal transaction costs are low, I insource and I grow the company. And if external transaction costs are really low, what I do is just outsource. I rather do it outside. And with that, I shrink the size of my company. Now, the question is, what effect does digitalization have? What do you think? Think about it. Does digitalization lead to bigger or to smaller companies? Kind of like a trick question because I, I have to be honest, I don't know myself. You can think about it two ways. For one, digitalization certainly reduces external transaction costs. I can now communicate with people who are halfway around the globe. I can supervise them much better. They can share their data with me. I can even install some video cameras to really supervise. They do their work very well. I can search for suppliers. I have a search costs are reduced. These are all transaction costs. And that makes sense then, since it's so low, these external transaction costs that I basically outsource a lot. Kind of like the crowdsourcing logic. I give it away to others to do this task. As a result, my company should shrink. And there comes these visions that we all live in this networked reality where there are only small micro entrepreneurs all networked together in digital networks and basically, well, trading with each other. But there's no need that we all get together in one big company. We are all our own bosses and we just sell our services in the network sharing economy. So it makes sense. And it's true that digital. Digitalization reduces these external transaction costs and it should lead to smaller companies. On the other hand, the reality is if we really look around in the digital realm, there are these huge companies, the richest companies in the history, the most valuable companies in the, in the history of humanity have come from the digital paradigm. And these are huge companies, Apple, Google, social networks, and so forth. So what happened there? Well, what happened is that internal transaction costs also got reduced. So it makes sense for a company like Google to buy up previous competitors or to buy up people that are in a vertical integration sense who are before or after in the value chain and with that increase vertically and horizontally and become this huge cross ownership conglomerate because internal transaction costs also got reduced. I can control my employers much easier. I have complete control over the production process. I know what's happening all the time. I can take advantage of network externalities that increase this decreases my transaction costs in, in, in more marketing and, and so forth. So there's also a tendency towards that. Now, is digitalization leading to smaller, bigger companies? I don't know. The, the judgment, the verdict is, is still out on that. And a lot of research needs to be done for us to better understand it. But what is clear is that digitalization shakes up the traditional optimal size of a company with the result that we have sometimes very small companies and sometimes these huge companies. And that is an area of active research.